Hello, this is a walkthrough for a Dutch Whispers gas by Philip Newman. Um, you can see that there aren't a title or author or rules in the puzzle link at the moment. That's because I just pulled this out of our gas testing channel. Uh, when you're seeing it, it will have rules, but right now I'll just tell you what the rules are, uh, which are uh, Dutch Whispers. So along any orange line, two adjoining digits. So for instance, these two digits or these two digits or these two digits always have to have a difference of four or more. So for example, the digit three along a line could go next to an eight because eight minus three is five. That's a difference of five, which is more than four. So that's good. Um, but it could not go next to six. Well, among other reasons, because there's a six in the column already, but also because six minus three is only three and that's not greater than four. So let's start. So one thing that is helpful to notice about Dutch Whispers, and hopefully this is something you can work out just by looking at this puzzle, even if you've never seen it before, but once you've done a Dutch Whisper puzzle or two, this will just become second nature, is that there is a digit that is special, uh, which is five. Five can only be adjacent to one or nine. And that means five is the only digit that can be adjacent to both a low digit and a high digit. All of the other digits, if they're low, they only end up being adjacent to high digits. If they're high, they only end up being adjacent to low digits. But you always want to look out for fives in Dutch whispers because they kind of flip the high lowity, or I've heard it called polarity of a line. And I see a five here. And so I immediately know that that's adjacent to one and nine. There's a nine in this box, so that's a one. Six can only be adjacent to one and two. Uh, any high digit is not far enough away from six. Uh, six minus four is two, so we have to go either one or two. There's a one in the row now that I just placed, so that's a two. And the other digit next to the six is a one. I see this other five here as well. It's already next to a one, so the other digit next to it is going to be a nine. Now in this box, I've just placed a one and a two. This seven has to go next to something. And normally the only digits the seven can be next to on a Dutch whisper are one, two, and three. But in this case, we have a one and two in the box. So seven has to be next to three to get that difference of four or more. My remaining digits here are four, eight, and nine. By Sudoku, I can't place a four or nine in row one in this position. So this is an eight. These two digits are four and nine, but three certainly can't go next to four because that's only a difference of one. So three must go next to nine, and that's a four. Nine can go next to any digit that's five or less. That means one, two, three, four, five, we eliminate one, three, and four. So that in this case means two or five. These digits along this line, let's finish that up. We need three and seven in the row. The three can't go next to one, so that's a seven, and that is a three. In this column, four can only be next to high digits. It has to be next to either eight or nine, and there's already a nine in the column, so let's place an eight. And my remaining digits here are two, three, and seven. Another thing to look out for in Dutch Whispers or in Whispers puzzles in general are situations where you have three pencil marks, and you need to look for which one of them can be placed in between the other two. Because several of these pairs could be adjacent, you know, seven could be adjacent to two, seven could be adjacent to three, and so on. But we can't place a two between a three and a seven is the thing to notice, uh, because two is not far enough away from three. The only one that can go in the middle there is seven, so that's three, that's two. Here we have a five, again, uh, that's going to go between one and nine. But six can't be next to nine, so this is a one. Six is only next to one and two. I mentioned that earlier in the top right corner, so that's going to be a two. Five has to go between one and nine. And my remaining digits are three, seven, and eight. And I'm going to use that same idea again to observe that the digit in the middle that can go next to both of the other two is three. That makes this an eight, thanks to the seven in the column, and makes this a seven. These three digits have to be three, four, and nine. I have a three in this column already, so I'm going to place a three here. I can't put an eight and a nine next to each other, so that's my four, that is my nine. This digit can now only be one, two, three, four, five. Ignore the one, two, and three since they're in the row already, so we're going to mark a four, five. Eight can't be next to nine, so this is a one and this is a nine. The digits I need here are one, six, and seven, and there's a seven in this column, so seven goes here. 
There's a one in this row, so this is six and this is one. These two cells contain six and nine in some order, and these cells contain four, five, and seven in some order. So this is a seven. Let's finish off this whisper line before we look at the middle. So I still need two, three, seven, and eight, right? And of those, only two and three can go next to the nine. And I see that I have a two in the row already, so that's a three. This can't be an eight by Sudoku because there's an eight in the region. So that must be a seven to be different enough from the three. That's now a two, and that makes this an eight. And in this top, um, this region one, uh, the, the only remaining corner region that I haven't already dealt with, I have a seven in the row. So the seven in this region can't go in those two cells, must go there. And I still need to place a one and a six, and I don't know yet where those go. These cells have to contain four and eight, and these cells contain two, five, and six. The center one can't be a two because there's already a two in this column. Now let's take a look at the middle whisper line. So we have an eight here, which is adjacent to two different digits along its line. Those digits have to be one, two, three, or four. And we already have a one and three in the column. So this is a two, four pair. That makes this a five and makes this an eight. We can eliminate five because of this five, and we can also eliminate two because of the two, four pair, making this a six and resolving our six, nine pair. And I'm cleaning my pencil marks now. This has to be a seven. That's the only remaining digit in the column. Now, if we look at the center column, we still need the digits one, three, and six. By Sudoku, this cannot be a one or three, so it must be a six. Now, six minus four is only two. So to get that difference of at least four, this has to be a two. My remaining digits here are five, eight, and nine. Nine out of those three can only be next to five, so those aren't five. And Sudoku tells me that this is not a nine, it is in fact an eight. These two cells contain four and six in this order. These cells are three, five, and eight. I've got a three and eight in the row, so this is our five. This is a three and an eight. And I need a one and two here. That's going to be a four and five and six. And that's how you solve um, Philip's Dutch Whispers puzzle.